I thought this shirt wasn't gonna look good with this hair. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Money Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today I have a very exciting topic and yet a very depressing one. Because I had such a hard time coming up with this, like, video that I'm kind of sad about it. This video, as you saw from the title, is all about sapphic romances that are not tragic. And by not tragic, I mean nobody dies in the end, or at least you know, they die after a long life together or something, like, these are supposed to be happy romances. You know how we get all the male-on-male -male romances? <laughs> but you know, we don't get a lot of that in the female realm. So I'm gonna tell you about some books that are in there. Now, I do have some honorable mentions here that deal with female-on-female -female relation not relationships, friendships. Because another thing that I noticed in the book community at large is that girls can't be friends <laughs> oh there's a whole talk coming about YA and the not like other girls trope get your panties ready it's gonna be great but first let's get into these books that do have some awesome female on female relationships and one of them has a female on non-binary relationship but We'll get to that in a bit. So the first book I have is a book that I've been pushing on this channel ever since I got the physical copy and I'm so happy all of it. And then that is The Dark Beneath the Eyes by Melinda Berube. Now this book, ooh, it's got some fluff in it. <laughs> this book is a, a possession book. It's about a girl named Marianne. She used to be this wonderful dancer. She used to have a wonderful relationship with her parents. Her parents break up and then her mom is taken to a psych ward and she has to stay with her aunt. But you soon realize that Marianne is straight up possessed by a demon. Like, this is not a spoiler, guys. Straight up possessed. And nobody believes her. And she meets this girl who at least listens. She does the thing that anybody would do in this situation where it's like, hey, maybe you should talk to a doctor. But the thing is, they develop a really beautiful friends to lovers relationship. And I don't want to give anything away, but it's beautiful. It's amazing how how much love there is here and how that love overcomes this great evil and how it's soft it's a really soft and gentle romance between like a super intense goth girl and this like ballet dancer i mean what else could you ask for so yeah i recommend that if you want a soft beautiful sapphic romance you pick up the dark beneath the eyes by melinda barube but remember what i said this does have that whole possession, uh, but is it mental illness? And it does talk about like her taking medicine and stuff like that. So if you're if you're like a little bit not somebody that is into that or that like triggers you, stay away from this book, okay? But if you're not, then pick it up. Next up, I have one that is a little bit debatable because it is a little bit tragic, but maybe not. But anyway, I'm gonna go with This Is How You Lose the Time War by uh, Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. This is the story of possibly human, but like alienist humans, and each of them has their own timeline. And what they have to do is kind of sabotage one another so that eventually the timeline that succeeds and becomes real is their own. Are you with me still? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, one of them is called Agent Blue and the other one is called Agent Red. And what happens is they begin to fall in love. And it's beautiful and wonderful and weird AF. And I loved every second of it. This is actually a novella. I'm not sure this is for everyone, but I had to put this in here because it deserves to be in here. In that same vein of novellas, I'm gonna go with The Deep by River Solomon. I've talked about The Deep by River Solomon in that Afrofuturism video that I posted a while ago. And um, what The Deep is, is basically the story of these mermaid-like people that were birthed 
from from enslaved African women that were thrown overboard while they were being brought over to be enslaved in America. They birthed these creatures and every generation or so there is a historian. This historian has to relive all of the horrible like story of their past and then pass it on to the, the other people because if you forget who you are, if you forget where you come from, then you forget yourself basically. And what ends up happening is that this process is so painful, the main character decides to just run away, she's not doing it anymore, she's done with this whole historian business. And when she runs away, she meets another character, another woman, who basically ha is the last of her tribe. She has lost everyone and everything she loves. And they develop, again, this beautiful mutual respect relationship that turns into a romantic, beautiful relationship. And it's just not tragic and it will melt your heart. I fully, fully, fully recommend that you please, please pick up The Deep by River Solomon. I know this is repetitive, but I don't care. We're gonna say The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Now this book is about found family. You've heard me talk about it a million times. It's about a crew of uh, people that punch holes in space. They get kind of caught up in some political issue, but it's not so much about that as it is about the people and how they develop their relationships and there is a female of a, an alien species here and a female human who developed the most beautiful friends with benefits that doesn't become anything else but it's still a friends with benefits with love and romance in it that I think we need to read more about because I feel like that whole friends with benefits thing either gets turned into oh so we become actual lovers you know we become girlfriend and girlfriend or boyfriend and boyfriend or partner and partner and in this book, that doesn't happen. They just have a mutual love and respect for each other and are attracted to each other. And they are in a wonderful friends with benefits, polyamorous relationship. It's great, it's beautiful. And I fully, fully recommend that you read it and that you read just this whole trilogy in general. It's so good. And in that same vein, I have here Record of a Space Born, Space Born Few by Becky Chambers. Now, what I love about this book from Becky Chambers is that, I'm sorry if you can hear my cat. What do you want? But basically, in this story, what I think is so important is that we have an older couple that have been together like for 50 years. They are 70 years old. They still love each other. They, she, Becky Chambers is not scared to be like, they kiss, they hug, they have sex at 70 because people at 70 still have sex and they are still just as in love with each other as they were in the past. And I think that that's such a beautiful thing to teach young people that, to see that these romances can last for a lifetime. And I love the respect they have for one another. I, I love how they know one another, how they know their quirks, how they know how to treat one another. It's just one of the most beautiful female on female romances that I have had the pleasure of reading. And I recommend that you pick it up. There is one more book in this saga. Um, it's it a saga, it's a trilogy. Well, it's gonna, there's, one, there's gonna be another book. But there isn't a female-female relationship on there, that's why I'm not recommending it, but it's still really, 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 really good. Now I'm gonna have some honorable mentions because sometimes even though there aren't um, sapphic romances and even though sometimes they can be a little bit tragic, I still felt like I needed to mention these books. The first one is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This book features a non-binary person in a relationship with a girl. And they have a beautiful relationship. I love that they argue. I love that it's not a perfect relationship. I love that there is some conflict there that comes from within the relationship and not from the outside sources that are like happening. 
and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great way to showcase that you can totally have a relationship that is not heteronormative in this context. And I like that this is a YA story because I think that it was a really good representation of a relationship between people that don't necessarily fall into the heteronormative binary. So, and also it's got a really, I didn't, I didn't say that, I didn't say the premise, but this is basically the story of a boarding school in this boarding school people go uh, that are extraordinary people. And this is the story of them solving a murder that happened at this school about a hundred years before. And it's a really fun series. It's a really like just kind of cozy up with a blanket and read series and it, it can be a little bit scary sometimes and i do warn you there are parts that like hmm, makes you a little bit like th there are deaths that happen and they don't shy away from telling you about them or you know like the description of them so if you're if you're a little bit sensitive to that just be careful about that the next book i have to talk about doesn't have a sapphic romance in it but it has the most incredible incredible female female r friendship that i have ever seen Fr like have you, can you think off of the top of your head like just a group of girls like a book about a group of girls that are all friends that are, none of them are trying to hurt each other that none of them are keeping secret from each other they are just there to support each other well a Madness So Discreet by Mandy McGinnis is one of those books. And I just gotta tell you, I feel that every female character in this book loves each other. That is amazing. There is no like competition between them. There is nothing like that. It's all just them trying to take care of each other and helping each other heal from trauma caused by men. But also, I like that in this book, some men are very bad people, but also some men understand that women have it really difficult in this world and that the importance of female and female relationships um, in the healing from trauma. So this is just like a really great book and I never hear anybody talk about it and I just I want everybody to be talking about this book because it's actually really good. However, huge trigger warning for um, miscarriage. It's at the beginning of the book, caught me by surprise. There should have been a trigger warning for it. I am telling you now, it's a later in pregnancy miscarriage caused by abuse. So just, just keep that in mind when you're going into this book, all right? There's also a trigger warning for suicide. Keeping in the vein of friendships, I want to talk about the friendship in Jacoby, the series between the two main characters. The, one of these main characters is a ghost that was murdered and she haunts the house that the, they're li living in. I think her name is Isabel. I don't remember her name, but she is Abigail, the main character's best friend. And they make the best dynamic beautiful duo and again there is this whole i want to help you i want to be your friend there's no competing for guys on the contrary they always gang up on jacoby which is so much fun and i love that in this case like they go to each other for moral and support and protection and love and they trust each other to the point that it can almost be dangerous for them but because they know each other so well and trust each other so well, they're willing to take a risk for their friends. And sometimes maybe they might be even willing to die for each other. And I just need more, I just need more female, female friendships like that. Where no, there's never a mention of, of how beautiful she is compared to me or how like none of that. In fact, it's all the contrary. It's all appreciation from the word go and i just oh my god why are you all sitting on these amazing series and i'm just like read them for all of this and more <laughs> and all the 
final book. I just got done with this series and I absolutely love it. And that is The Memoirs of Lady Trent by Marie Brennan. Now, The Memoirs of Lady Trent are kind of like a memoirs written about the, a Victorian era adventurer and paleontolo paleontologist <laughs> named uh, Lady Trent. And she studies dragons. Yeah, that's right. In this world, dragons are real and they are just animals to be studied. Kind of like spying on whales, which is right here, which I love. But anyway, what I want to talk about in this book is that the not only does Lady Trent not talk shit about women that want to stay home and be mothers, she actually simply says that that is their life and that she fully supports that. What? Women supporting each other and not caring whether one of them wants to be a mom and the other one doesn't? Huh? Aren't we all supposed to not want to like stay home? What is this, you know? So, um... I just love that about her. I love that she explains that she doesn't have a motherly instinct, even though she does have a child, but she doesn't have a motherly instinct. She loves her child, but it's not that motherly instinct that we're used to where it's like, oh, my, my precious little one that must be protected. And I love that about her. But not only that, she makes friends. She has female friends that love and respect each other for their academic work. And she actually helps one of them get into the world of academia even though her family is completely against it because they want her to get married and she actually tells her, look, you probably should get married just to appease your family. And when the other one is like, but I don't want to. And I think that there's kind of a little hint that she might be gay, but I'm not sure what happens in the end. Um, it's kind of left open, but in the end, Lady Trent is like, well, I'm going to help you because you know what? Without somebody having helped me be where I am today, I just would be just like <laughs> out there uh, living a very unhappy life as a, as a family woman, which again, she doesn't say that family women are unhappy she just says that she would be unhappy and i think that that's a very big distinction i have another book chat coming about the not like other girls trope in um ya and why i think it's really harmful and horrible but that's another story for another time and well that's it these are the books that i have read that have amazing female on female relationships and friendships that are not tragic and that I feel represent really well the dynamics between women because women we love each other and that should be shown more often and I feel this soft romantic female female sapphic romance should be more often depicted than it is so there you go um if you're wondering why i don't mention evelyn hugo on here i know uh that's one that i probably should have mentioned where is it did i take it out oh i did oh look i <laughs> i'm gonna have to insert it because i had this all along um the thing is i feel that this is actually a tragic romance so that's why it's not there but it is a sapphic romance so read it if you will just know that it's kind of tragic <laughs> but anyway you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video please leave down below books that you have read that are not heartstopper that have female on female relationships that are beautiful it doesn't have to be romantic sometimes friendships are just as important as romantic relationships but yeah, without any further ado, I bid you adieu with a reminder that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and that I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for coming back to my videos. Thank you for watching if you are new. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for making my dreams of having this be a platform where I share my love and thoughts about books a reality. I really, really, really appreciate you guys. But I will see you in another galaxy.
far, far away. Bye, guys.